Who is wise and understanding among you? Let him show it by his good life, by deeds done and the humility that comes from wisdom. But if you harbor bitter envy and selfish ambition in your hearts, do not boast about it or deny the truth. Such wisdom does not come from heaven, but is earthly, unspiritual of the devil. For where you have envy and selfish ambition, there you find disorder and every evil practice. But the wisdom that comes from heaven is first of all pure, then peace-loving, considerate, submissive, full of mercy and good fruit, impartial and sincere. Peacemakers who sow in peace raise a harvest of righteousness. One of my favorite Old Testament stories growing up, and really even still to this day, is a story about David's son Solomon. One night after he had become king in 1 Kings chapter 3, God appeared to Solomon in a dream and said, ask me for anything you want. Solomon's answer has always fascinated me. He didn't ask for riches or long life. He asked God for wisdom. He was asking God for wisdom in part because just prior to this dream in chapter 2, we see Solomon already contained a form of uh, unenlightened wisdom, one that was mostly self-serving. Solomon came to recognize this in chapter 3 and then made this request to God, one based out of humility instead of selfish ambition. God then granted Solomon's request and Solomon then became wiser than all other men. At the end of James 3, in a chapter almost entirely dedicated to taming the tongue, we come across this small little section which almost appears to be thrown in by James as an afterthought on wisdom. While it may seem out of place to us at first, James knew it was not intelligence or great knowledge which could tame the tongue, but wisdom, and a heavenly wisdom found in humility, grace, and peace. There just is no other way we can control our tongues than without this heavenly wisdom from above. James 3, 13 through 18 is a story of wisdom presented to us as two completely different sides of the same coin, one that we still see played out in our world today. On one side of this wisdom coin, we have a heavenly wisdom from above, which is full of mercy and peace. Now on the other side, we have an earthly wisdom, which is characterized by jealousy, envy, pride, and selfish ambition. James says seeking after a heavenly wisdom results in an abundance of God's peace in our lives, while seeking after an earthly wisdom leads to disorder in every vile practice we could possibly imagine. We still see this played out every day going all the way back to Genesis 3, 6, when Eve acted in her own earthly wisdom and self-interest instead of following after God's heavenly wisdom. Our own culture today thrives on this earthly wisdom. We do this to fulfill the American dream by looking out for ourselves, by climbing that corporate ladder, by using our abilities and our knowledge to gain an advantage over someone else. Growing up, I paid little attention to that heavenly wisdom found in simply li just living a godly life. But I did find earthly wisdom from my friends, my classmates, and even later my working colleagues. They always seemed to know the best way to turn a situation around to their benefit. And I learned very well from their example. As a believer, I thought I turned my desire for this earthly wisdom around into a deep longing for heavenly wisdom through seeking knowledge and specifically knowledge that we find in our faith. For years, one of my continuous prayers as a believer is one similar to Solomon's in 1 Kings 3, but without any attempt to remove those self-serving ambitions which come from that earthly wisdom. While I diligently prayed for wisdom, my actions would seek after that earthly wisdom by trying to find uh, more ways to get ahead instead of seeking after God's heavenly wisdom, which we find in just living out what Scripture teaches us. Obtaining more earthly wisdom 
Whether we get this uh, from our latest smartphone or from movies or music or even from our most esteemed pastor we know doesn't help to control the tongue. Earthly wisdom might temporarily satisfy our desire to outdo our brother, but this rarely will show God's love. We've probably all known people who have accumulated vast sums of knowledge which can impress us with fancy arguments and competition. But I can still find this in myself as well, buried deep in my heart where many sins reside without ever seeing the light of day. So what is the difference between heavenly wisdom and earthly wisdom then? James gives us this great way to test ourselves for heavenly wisdom, and it sounds so unlike anything that we normally hear in other parts of Scripture. It comes from our behavior. What this means is heavenly wisdom will be seen by our conduct through humility and meekness, not by gaining vast sums of knowledge or in our ability to outdo one another. We can ask ourselves, are we gaining this heavenly wisdom of God? Apart from a true desire to walk in a manner pleasing to God, no one really has true wisdom. And without true wisdom, we have little hope of taming our tongue. I sometimes have a tendency to argue my point with just about anyone who will listen. This only solidifies my understanding of really how difficult it is for a tamed tongue to coincide with this earthly wisdom, which James even calls demonic. If heavenly wisdom is applying knowledge properly, according to God's will, how do we really know we have achieved wisdom from above at all? We know we have the wise answer the response of wisdom because it won't be argumentative, it won't be contentious or self-seeking. It will be gentle, it'll be peacemaking, and it'll be clearly seen through our actions in our godly behavior. So here's a few questions for us. Are you actively seeking a heavenly wisdom or an earthly wisdom in your daily walk? When you interact with others, are your responses gentle? Or are they argumentative and with an agenda? And can others see God's heavenly wisdom in your actions and in your day-to-day -day behavior?